Hello everyone, it's Gina Page, president and co-founder of AfricanAncestry.com. It's Saturday, April 11th. We're almost halfway through our month of inner, uh, what do we call them? IG, African Ancestry Conversations with Family Members. African Ancestry Family Conversations. I'm going to get the name of this thing right one day. Hello, and thank you for joining me. What's up, Joseph? Hello, Sahara, my angel. I love that name. I swear you guys have the best names. It's good to see you here. I hope you all are having a good Saturday. I, um, my Saturday, hmm, have I been having a good Saturday? Oh, I went to the grocery store. I was Instacart for my mother today and for myself. Uh, that was quite an experience here in DC. There's a line. You, they only let a certain number of people in the grocery store at a time. But it's nice once you're inside because it's not crowded and uh, people are keeping their distance so you can get what you have to get done and be in and out. <sighs> Thank you, Fit and Order. It's good to be here. Um, so today, you all know that we come, we come on every day um, at 5 p.m. Eastern to have a conversation with an African ancestry family member. And I am really excited to uh, talk to our guest today, Barry Payton down in New Orleans. He is very active with us on the uh, African Ancestry Facebook Lives that we do on Wednesday evenings. He's always representing for New Orleans. He's always representing for the continent. And uh, it's a pleasure when I see his name pop on, up on the screen. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. African Ancestry is the pioneer of genetic ancestry tracing for Black people around the world. For the past 17 years, we have been helping to transform the way that Black people, we view ourselves and the way we view Africa. And we do that through DNA. So we use your DNA to reconnect you to the continent of Africa, not to a plethora of regions that have been designated by random people, but to the present day African countries and African ethnic group or tribes that you share ancestry with. You can check us out at AfricanAncestry.com to start your search for your identity uh, based on your ancestry on the continent. And uh, we have so much to share and so much to talk about. Every day we've been talking to a different African Ancestry family member about their experience because I really, it's important to me that you are people. And so uh, I have Barry Payton coming in here shortly to uh we are hey oh now sister gina what you say there hey what's going on barry oh pretty good i'm kind of new with this uh, uh just took a shower too so <laughs> good i appreciate you taking a shower for us. Uh, gotta, gotta do it doing this virus doing this coronavirus thing yeah Yes, yes. Well, welcome. Welcome to Instagram. I understand you just set up your IG account to be able to do this. Yeah, I just, look, I'm learning. I mostly deal with, you know, with Facebook on y'all, you, know, you know, all the time. But, uh -huh. yeah. but this, this was easy to connect. Good. Thank you for having me on, first of all. Oh. I mean, I really appreciate this. This is an honor. Oh. You know, I love to represent the NOLA, Seven Ward, Hardhead, all, you know, for life. Uh, and and, and, and y'all helping me to find a path to understand my ancestors. You know, knowing that we always say Timney Abara, Timney Nation. All right. So we've had, we had a, a guest on yesterday, Thomas Williams, who we've traced to the Timney people as well. But before we jump in, I have three words for you, Barry. And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word. You ready? OK. All right. Africa. Ancestors. DNA. <laughs> African ancestry. Identity. Timney. Nice, nice. You know, every every day we've gotten different answers, so that's cool. Now, you Af you know your ancestry. You mentioned Timney. Tell us what that means to you. Tell us what the t who the Timney are and what that means to you to know that ancestry. Yep. 
Uh, it, it, it means the greatest. Um, it means a, a, a circle complete. Mm -hmm. um, the term they are from, as you know, Sierra Leone, but originally they from Fuda Jalon. Um, they came down with the uh, the, 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 the Mani Empire. Um, at a, uh, by former uh, Tommy. Um, to set up the, the Koya Empire. Um, it's the second largest ethnic group in Sierra Leone. Um, I, I kind of want to sidetrack because New Orleans has so many uh, uh, history of Africans who were transported there. And the Timne, the Mende, the Lemba, Loco, Vi, all from that area were brought here uh, to the plantations, namely to work on the rice plantations down here. Mm. So it means a lot because you're trying to make this connection. You're trying to find, you know, your earliest ancestor. And you, in the way we're doing, we're going from now to then. So finding out that I was Timney, it actually, uh, uh, and look, I ain't ashamed to admit it. It brought tears to my eyes. It, it, it felt so good. It felt like, all right, this is who I am. This is my place in the universe. Um, this is who my descendants are also. So it, 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 it means so much. Uh, my wife, let it be known, she's Mende and she's Fanti. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So, you so know. For people, that don't know the, 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 for people who don't know, the Mende are, are the largest ethnic group in Sierra Leone. And so the two exactly. of you come from a uh, neighboring tribe, so to speak. Right, right. That's, that's, that's why we uh, treat each other the way that we do now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. I hope that's a good thing. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Because you know what? We just made our 22nd anniversary. Nice. Uh, April 3rd. Congrats. Yeah, she's my queen. She is my queen. Very nice. So it sounds like you've done a lot of research on uh, the Temini, both in uh, Sierra Leone, but also in their connection to, to your NOLA experience um yes. so how have how have you used that information um mostly uh to to well just by sharing okay knowing that uh, louisiana has um uh, a lot of records and wallace for that matter they said they were able to save a lot of records the french and the spanish were excellent at taking inventory they wanted to know exactly where the africans were coming from and um in some of the database you could actually see uh, when they were purchased, uh, you know, it actually will say Timney. It would actually say Mende. It would actually say Yoruba. It would actually say um, a phone or wherever they wanted to uh, purchase these particular Africans from. Let me so ask I you this, though, before, you, let me ask you this. Were there names there? Were the people's names on the records as well? Yes, yes. Uh, but a lot of times you might get a French name. You might get a, a Spanish name. Uh, very seldom, but there are uh, some African names that still that were registered with their traditional African name. You see these on the ledgers. You see this uh, uh, on, on the sales receipts. Um, you can actually, uh, even on top of that, some of the names are passed down. Like just to be known, Senegal is a popular uh, name in South Louisiana. Mm. Really? Really. Now, I've heard you in, in the country of Colombia, if you look in the phone book, you'll see the, the last names of people indicative of where they were taken from. But so, right. you're saying, so it sounds like that's similar in, uh, in, New Orleans, in Louisiana. Yes, it is. It, it, it may be spelled different, but the same, same pronunciation, Senegal. Hmm. Yeah. So, and, have, you know, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say that uh, also learning that I'm Timney, and I, I have to give this man a shout out. Forte Kunda Conte. <laughs> that dude, that dude is amazing. He has all the information. He has all the instructions. Uh, he gives you a pathway. He gives you history. He gives you culture. He gives you religion. I would not know anything about Timney if it wasn't for that man. So I give him massive respect. I mean, he like... You know, he is the book. 
Yes, yes. And we, uh, Thomas Wil Williams, who we interviewed yesterday, he shouted out for a day in the exact same way. So we test, you become a member of the family, obviously, but we have an exclusive online community on Facebook where our family members share information, share resources with one another. And Fode is our resident expert on uh, all things Sierra Leone. So, uh, he's, he's, he's a library. He's a walking library. And, and he has, I, I must tell you all, he has traveled there and um, recently received citizenship. So we are very honored uh, to have him as part of the family. Vault uh, is watching and wants to know what database did you use to, or would one use to access those records in Louisiana? Um, you, you more than likely you have to belong to a historical society or part of one of the universities, but in certain areas, um, you'd have to go to Baton Rouge to see some of these in, in, in uh, the Louisiana State Archives and Records. Um, okay. University of New Orleans has some records. Um, uh, the actual, you know, the, the, the ledgers or whatever. Uh, the historical New Orleans collection, you see it there. And another place, um, kind of sidebar, but uh, the place called uh, Whitney Plantation. Yes. It's, I want to vis visit there. I've heard so many things about that plantation. I can tell you that it's the only plantation I really wanted to go to, and I've been to plenty, uh, even from even within my family's plantation. But this here is more, it's a museum, it's a historical class, it's, uh, it's a travel into pain, but also uh, out of success. They have this thing called uh, the Wall of Indigo, where it's this big gigantic granite wall, right? And there's a bunch of names, and it, it, it tells you where these Africans are from. Uh, you will see Bamara Nation, you will see uh, Soninke, you see Timne. Mm. One, one brother name was uh, Philippe Timne. And there's, a, and there's another Timne on there, but we couldn't find him. But uh, you, you will see a Wolof, you see Yoruba, uh, Chamba, you will see a, a plethora of African ethnic groups there. And you know, you, you actually see the, the, the cabins where we slept in. Mm -hmm. You see the cane fields. Um, there's a lot of monuments. It's, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It's educational, but it hurts. But it's something that we have to know. It's something that we have to share. Because that's part of our African lineage. That's part of our African connection. And just dealing with New Orleans, you kind of see where the African retention comes from out of West Africa. You know, I'm glad you said that about the Whitney uh, plantation. It's Gilletta. He's talking about the Whitney plantation down in New Orleans. Uh, but it, it, our history, unfortunately, is painful. Uh, but yes, it's it is. very important that we know it. We got to. You have to know your history. And so I appreciate that you're sharing these resources with us uh, about uh New Orleans and Louisiana and how we can learn more down there. The Whitney Plantation is very well known. I first was introduced to it by the artist B. Mike down there in New Orleans. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah awesome. Was doing, awesome. A few years ago, he was doing a project there. I can't, I can't remember. So, talk, speaking of the African Ancestry online community, um, how would you describe that experience? Because you're very active in the community. How would you describe it? Uh, first and foremost, I can say, look, it's like finding uh, lost family members. I mean, it's, it's like I, I know my blood when I see it and I feel it. And all of us are in, um, in unity. Um, it's about uh, uh, us sharing the same ideals, same ideologies, uh, Sarah, Sharon, and also learning, because most of us didn't even know that we were part of these ethnic groups. And African ancestry helped us to find certainly that, that ethnic group, but who those ethnic groups are, what are their, uh, 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 you know, where they are, what are their ethnographic uh, tendencies, you know, um, 
what, what are their traditional African ways? What are their traditional religions? Uh, what was their professions, artisans, uh, blacksmiths, or whatever? So African ancestry gave you this connection. When I first got it in the mail, I was like, okay, all right. I, you know, just thinking from New Orleans, I thought I was foreign. I thought I was Yoruba. I thought I was Wolof. When they told me Timney, I like, something hit me. Something hit me deep. And I was like, all right, I found my home. I know where I am. I know where I need to be. You know, and I'm, I'm sure I can bet that there are others in the Af African ancestry community that feel the same. Like, it gives you a deeper sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, it lets you know that, you know, your place in the universe is real. You just didn't come from no watermelon patch somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, you know, you just didn't appear out of thin air. You know, and, and, and I don't want to get into what some of my family and friends may be believing religiously. They, they believe they're this, they believe they're that. But you know, you have to know that you are from, at least for us, that we're part of West Africa. That's our continuance. That's our bridge. You know, and African ancestry helped me to the fullest. Hey, I, I, look, I give y'all all the props in the world. You have no idea what you've done for me, for my family, and for, for the rest. Because this is... It's like solid gold. It's like having a solid gold brick in your hand. Like now I want to have a, you know, a 10 minute chain, straight platinum with gold fronts. That's the way I feel about it right now. <laughs> Not the you know? gold fronts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Barry, you, white are, gold. you yourself are a wealth of information. Can you, and, and we have to shout out some of your uh, family members on the chat. Mary's checking in. Joseph is checking in. That's who I recognize the uh, the names, but some of the African mm -hmm. ancestry family. Shout out to all of you who are who are on the chat with us. But as an expert, can you talk to us about Congo Square? Tell us what it is. I think I think people would be interested in hearing about it and how it connects New Orleans and Africa. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, the, the first slave ships, the Lower, Lower, Lower uh, I forgot how you pronounce it, Laura and uh, Dubain were the first ones to come to Louisiana, Louisiana Territory in 1718, 1719. Uh, it brought the Senegamians in, the Wolof, Mandinka, Jola, uh, Serre, you know, a lot of those people from that area. That was your first, like, you know, wave of uh, Africans into the, into the city and into, the, into, the, uh, into Louisiana Territory. Uh, second wave was like the Yoruba, uh, the Fawn, Awe, uh, uh, Mina, uh, bom uh, Bambara also. I, had a, I forgot. This Bambara is very important to Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then, then you had the, uh, the Baafra with the, with the Chamba and the Igbo, you know, and, and, and then later on, I mean, there's a bunch of other ethnic groups that's related to them that came through. And as time goes on, you can see through the 1700s, 1721, 1730s, you have these waves of Africans being sent through New Orleans. Um, and then where we come from, from, from the, 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 the uh, Windward Islands, you know, from Liberia, uh, uh, Guinea-Bissau, uh, uh, Sierra Leone, even parts of Ivory Coast, you see those same ethnic groups coming in in waves. And then lastly, you have the Congo and Angola, and that was the biggest, probably the biggest influx of Africans that were sold here. People have to know, like, New Orleans was, like, the leading slave port at all times because it dealt with the whole world. It dealt with South America, Central, uh, Central America, uh, dealt with the, the, the Caribbean islands, and it de dealt with the west coast of Africa. Even we have some from the east coast of uh, Africa, from Mozambique, Tanzania. Uh, you got, like, the Maqua. Uh, I can't remember the name of the other tribes. I'm, I'm sorry, ethnic groups that come from the east coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it's, it's, we had over 50, 50, maybe 54, 52 slave dens. And if you ever walk through the French quarters, if you ever walk through, uh, walk through, uh, Treme, Marigny, these are the most oldest neighborhoods in New Orleans. A lot of these places are where Africans were sold. There's actually a walking tour where you can see some of the places, even in the CBD, not too far from where the, um, what a convention center is. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of places over there that were the prominent slave holders. Yeah, the, a place called uh, Strange Alley. I mean, we have so much African retention. I mean, you, you also know the food. You know, some gumbo, etouffee, jambalaya, dirty rice. That's, 
I mean, I, I, look, I got a long list, and I'm going to make myself hungry thinking about it. I, I'm but, feeling, um, I was feeling hungry just listening to your accent and hearing you talk about New Orleans before <laughs> you even mentioned the food. <laughs> But even even in the um, I was just say one more thing. But just the the the, the iron balconies that you see in the uh, French quarters were done by Africans, mm -hmm. and certain places you can actually see the indecorous symbols that they left, even on the St. Louis Cathedral. Um, I'm gonna post some stuff about that because it's it's all over the city that we have our hands and our blood in the soil. You know, we we built the city, we built America, yeah. we built Europe for that matter. You know what I'm saying? So. We always got to give our ancestors all the props in the world because without them, there would be no us. And we stand on their shoulders. You know what I'm saying? So we got to gotta always acknowledge them. I don't care what you mix with. If you, you're, all right. Part of the fight in, in, in the wall is, is that we know we're mixed with French, Spanish, German, you know, and people all call that first, you know, or uh, Native American. That's part of our history. But you have to know your earliest ancestor was from West Africa. Well, that was an that was an, a history lesson for us. Thank you so much. I got a lot more than I bargained for um, with that question. Okay. I appreciate <laughs> that. And Ty has a suggestion that you start doing walking tours of, of New Orleans. So we're going to have to see once things uh, return to where we can move around the, the country, yeah, or exactly. around the world. We might have to <laughs> plan a trip to descend upon NOLA and have you show us around. Baby, you got that. I'll make it happen for you. Very good. Very good. Well, Barry, I want to thank you for, again, for joining us for this African Ancestry Conversations with family members. Uh, you, as I mentioned earlier, are uh, one of our champions, especially in the African Ancestry online community. And we certainly appreciate your support on these Facebook Lives when you come in and you're schooling people. That's the other thing that the online community does. They, uh, they, they help educate people who seem to have some confusion yeah. <laughs> about uh, the test that they <laughs> took. One of the most confusing things occurs when people don't receive an African result. And we let you know up front, you, if you all have been watching these lives, you hear me say every day, we cannot guarantee that your result will be African. Uh, but right. when it is, we give you the present day country and ethnic group that you share ancestry with, but you and others are very are very um, thorough in explaining to people, uh, explaining away their confusion. So I appreciate that. I know that you and your family are in New Orleans, and I've heard from the limited news that I consume that uh, your area is being hit especially hard by this pandemic. And so I hope that. Uh, you know that our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family and the entire community as we move through this current state of affairs in our nation. Right. Uh, I'll be honest. Look, I was sick. I was down for two weeks. I'm just recovering. So, look, it's real. Uh, as black people, we got to get our health together, to be honest. Yeah. I'll be honest. And, but I can't wait for y'all to come. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, we're here to hear from you, not me. Oh, no, I just said, look, I can't wait till y'all to come down when all the smoke clears, and, you know, we can have us a good time down here. You know I, what I'm saying? We can, we can catch us a good second good time. I, I have no doubt about that whatsoever. <laughs> you are, I'm Jean, yeah. president and co-founder of AfricanAncestry.com, uh, the pioneers of genetic ancestry tracing for Black people around the world. I'm here with our African Ancestry family member, Barry Payton, and I, I imagine that that's your wife in the background helping to well, negotiate this. So shout out to her. She's part of the family too. <laughs> that's, that's my wife, Nakima. Beautiful woman. Yes. I, I would do nothing without her. I'll be honest with you. Well, shout out to Nakima. We love you just as much. And I will be back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, to have another conversation with an African ancestry family member. And I don't know what the, it's Sequoia Allen. He, he, he's up there with you in terms of. Oh, uh, he's up the there. Knowledge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, be driving, he be driving it. He, he, yeah. Yeah. yeah he be I, I got to get ready. I got to get ready for that one. Just like I had to get ready for yours. But until tomorrow, until we meet again, may you be happy. May you be healthy. And may you be whole. Thank you. Respect. Thank you, Barry. Talk to you later. Thank you.